Prometheus, the OG rebel and the ultimate thorn in Zeus's egotistical ass. This dude didn't just create humans, he straight up had the balls to steal fire from the gods. So, before humanity was even created, there was an epic smackdown between the up-and-coming Greek gods and a gang of badass giants called the Titans. In the Titan army, you had two brothers, Prometheus, whose name screams foresight, and Epimetheus, whose name shouts hindsight. One sees the future while the other is stuck regretting his damn life choices. Prometheus using his foresight tells his fellow Titans, Yo knuckleheads, I've got a bad feeling about this whole bullshit war going on. But do his Titan buddies listen? Hell no. They're too busy flexing their muscles and talking trash. So what does Prometheus do? He's like, screw you guys, I'm out. He grabs his brother Epimetheus and jumps ship to join Team Zeus. As Prometheus foresaw, the gods come out on top, kicking Titan butt and sending them straight to the cosmic slammer Tartarus. Turns out, ignoring the guy who can see the future wasn't the brightest move. Who knew? Now, Zeus decides to cut Prometheus and Epimetheus some slack for their little switcheroo. He's like, alright, you too. Consider your sorry asses spared, but don't think you're off the hook just yet. You've got a job to do. And what's that job? Just a small task of creating all living things and distributing the gifts of the gods among those creatures. No pressure, easy peasy, right? While Epimetheus is out there creating all kinds of creatures like birds, beasts, and unicorns, handing out the gifts of wings, claws, and rainbows like a freaking Santa on steroids, Prometheus is down in the muck, getting his hands dirty, creating just one freaking creature. He's crafting the very first prototype of mortal men out of mud and water. By the time Prometheus finishes his masterpiece, good all Epimetheus is left high and dry, with none of those divine goodies left in his sack. Talk about dropping the ball, right? And what does that mean for us poor ass mortals? Well, we're basically screwed. Men would be left out in the cold to fend for themselves in a world full of hungry beasts. Thanks a lot, Epimetheus. Really appreciate the half-assed effort. But Prometheus ain't about to sit back and watch his creations suffer. Oh no, he decides to give us mortals the kind of gifts that even the gods would envy. First up, he molds us in the image of the gods, just to rub it in their shitty faces. Then, as if that wasn't enough, he goes ahead and throws in his own special power, the gift of foresight. With this badass ability to think rationally, mortals are suddenly elevated to a whole new level of badassery. Finally, he goes to the forges of Hephaestus and brings fire to mankind. We're talking about a freaking game changer here, think about it. Fire's like the Swiss army knife of gifts. It keeps your cold ass warm, cooks your damn food, scares off predators, you name it. It's like he's saying, here you go bitches, enjoy a little taste of godhood. With fire dancing in their hands, mortals suddenly felt a whole lot less dependent on the gods for every little blessing. And this got Zeus's egotistical ass bruised big time. So, he plays dirty and demands mankind to sacrifice every last snack in their pantry. Greek version of Hunger Games, where the gods feast and mortals fast. But Prometheus, being the crafty dude he is, steps in with a crafty plan. He's like, yo, shithead, we'll split the feast. Half goes to you, half stays with the mortals. This keeps everyone fed and happy. Except for Zeus, of course. He's like, sure, you can split the feast, but I'm calling the shots on who gets what. Now, this is where Prometheus pulls off a fucking abracadabra. He grabs a massive ox and splits that sucker in two. For the first half, he takes the juiciest, most mouth-watering cuts of meat and hides them under the ox's disgusting, unappetizing stomach. Then, for the second half, he covers up the hard bones with a thick layer of delicious fat. When he presented these two portions to Zeus, he's like, wow, that second one looks mighty yummy. Little does he know, he's just been bamboozled by Prometheus. Now, Zeus, getting his egotistical ass bruised for a second time, decides to rain on Prometheus's parade. He's like, oh, you think you're clever, huh? Well, say goodbye to that fire you love so much. And just like that, he snatches away the flames, leaving humanity shivering in the dark once again. But Prometheus is having none of that crap. He's like, not on my watch. So, he jets off to Mount Olympus and steals the fire right from under Zeus's nose. Then, he's off like a shot, racing down the mountain to deliver that fiery goodness back to the humans. We're still riding the wave of Prometheus's boldness even to this day. The Olympic torch? That's Prometheus's signature move right there. And the Statue of Liberty? She's practically Prometheus in copper form, standing tall with that torch raised high, showing Prometheus's middle finger to the gods. When Zeus sees those little flickering campfires down below, he's beyond pissed. He's like, Prometheus, you sly asshole, how dare you betray me like this? 
So, he cooks up a twisted punishment straight out of the twisted crack of his ass. He goes to Hephaestus, the blacksmith god, and says, Hey, buddy, whip me up something fine. And that's when Pandora enters the scene. She's like the first draft of womankind. Yeah, you heard me right. Before Pandora came onto the scene, it was just a sausage fest all over the world. Mankind, as in mankind, no humankind in sight. With Pandora, Zeus decides to throw in a little twist. He blesses her with an insatiable curiosity, hands over a goddamn box, tells her not to open it, and sends her down to earth as a gift to Prometheus's brother, Epimetheus. But Prometheus had already warned Epimetheus about this. He's like, listen up, bro, when it comes to Zeus, there's always a catch. So no matter how tempting that kitty is, don't you dare take any goddamn goodies from him, understood? Do. Not. But Epimetheus being Epimetheus, falls head over heels for Pandora's charm and beauty, completely ignoring his brother's warning. Way to go, bro, you really dropped the balls on that one. Now, Pandora couldn't resist the urge, could she? She's itching to crack open that forbidden box. So, she pops that lid open for a quick peek inside, and bam, out come all the nasties, curses, illnesses, and people who spend their money on only fans, all come flying out like bats out of hell. By the time she slams that lid back down, the damage is already done. Only one sucker remained in the box, hope. Now this punishment was for humans alone, but Prometheus, he's a totally different story. Zeus chains him in the Caucasus Mountains for eternity, iron style. But that ain't all. Oh no, every day, like clockwork, a goddamn eagle swoops down, feasts on his liver like it's a buffet, and Prometheus, being immortal, has to endure all the pain, but come nighttime, his wounds heal up, his liver regenerates, and he's good as new. You'd think he could catch a break, but nope. As soon as that sun rises again, here comes Mr. Goddamn Eagle for round two. Poor Prometheus is stuck in that never-ending nightmare for 30,000 years, but just when it seems like there's no end in sight, in comes Hercules in search of the secret garden of Hesperides, who just happens to be the daughters of Prometheus's other brother Atlas. Talk about family connections, right? So, Hercules sees Prometheus's plight and decides to lend a helping hand. When that eagle comes swooping down, expecting its usual feast, he lets loose his trusty arrows and takes it down like a boss. With his Herculean strength, he busts those iron chains like they're made of paper, freeing Prometheus from his eternal hardship. Prometheus, grateful for the save, decides to repay the favor by spilling the beans on how to snag those golden apples. It's like a mutual exchange of favors, one hero to another. But in a different version of the story, Zeus finds himself in a bit of a pickle falling head over heels for Thetis, not knowing about a deadly prophecy. And who happens to know about this prophecy? None other than our dude, Prometheus. He's like, hey dumbass, just a heads up, Thetis' kitty might not be the best idea. Anything that pops out of that one would end up being more famous and powerful than its old man. That prophecy strikes Zeus right up in his ass like a thunderbolt. You see, Zeus knows a thing or two about daddy issues. I mean, the guy offed his own dad, Kronos, who in turn offed his own dad, Uranus. So yeah, Zeus immediately calls off the wedding, and as a token of gratitude, decides to let Prometheus off the hook from his eternal punishment. Now, if you're wondering who this Thetis is, she's the mama of Achilles, the badass hero who tore shit up in the Trojan War. But that is a story for another time. 